All right, welcome back to another episode. So in this episode, we're going to go ahead and talk about get requests, what they are. I'm going to show you how we can implement that in our Express server. So a get request is simply just a request method that you can use with the HTTP protocol. And it pretty much specifies that you're trying to retrieve some kind of resource that lives on a server. So that resource can be really anything. For example, you can get a list of invoices. You can get a customer's recent payment transaction, right? You can get a list of authenticated users, practically anything. Okay, so it depends on your application, of course. Let's say if you're building an application uh, that you know handles uh, of booking flights, for example, right? You can create a resource on your server that users or clients can make an HTTP GET request to that will return them a list of booked flights. Okay, that's just a simple example. So in a nutshell, it's really just a way to retrieve a piece of information that lives on a server. Okay, that's really all it is. So let's go ahead and implement a simple GET request. And what we're going to do is we're going to send back some data just so you can understand how exactly the GET request work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just skip a couple of lines. So I'm going to go on line eight and I'm going to reference our app Okay, so we're going to do app and we're going to call a method. Let me zoom in a little bit more. I should have done that in the last episode. So we're going to go ahead and call the get method. Okay, and it's going to take in two parameters. Okay, well, the first parameter is, uh, is, is mandatory. So the first parameter is going to be the path. Okay, so you'll notice that when you visit websites, when you visit URLs, they have what's called a path a route path right and that path pretty much specifies a location of where a certain resource can live okay so let's say for example if we're building an application like i said that books flights or let's say for example you're building some kind of uh, application that stores books in a database right you'd want to define that path in such a way that makes sense to the end user that is trying to request that resource Right. So it's really good practice to make sure that you're defining your your path that allows users to kind of like predict what exactly they're going to get back. So let me explain a little bit more. So for the rest of the tutorial, we're just going to pretend like we're building an application that returns uh, groceries like grocery items, for example. OK, so what I would do is let's say, for example, if I want to if, if I'm building an API that returns uh, a list of groceries, right, I would want to set my route to be something that is predictable to the user that makes them think, okay, well, if I call this route, I'm getting back a list of groceries. Okay. So we can do that by simply passing in a string. So I'm going to go ahead and call it groceries. Okay. And the second parameter is going to be a callback function. And it's going to take in two arguments inside that callback function. It's going to take in the request object which we'll call rec, R-E-Q. And it's going to take in the response object, which we're going to call R-E-S, res, okay? These two parameters you're going to be using over and over again. So it's important that we understand what exactly these parameters are. The request parameter pretty much gives you all the information about the request, okay? So it gives you all the information about the client that is making the request to this server. So you can get information such as cookies, you, you can get the IP address, you can get the headers, right? You can tell if they're authenticated or not. All the information lives inside the request object, okay? The response object is responsible for handling sending responses back to the client. So let's just say, for example, you have a client, aka an end user, that is making a request to this groceries endpoint. Well, remember, the whole purpose of an API is to perform some kind of service at a task and you want to send a response back to the user to let them know what happened, right? You want to let them know if the request was successful or if something happened with the server or if they were, let's say, for example, if they were unauthorized, like, like they're not logged in. You want to notify the user what exactly happened. And you do that by sending a response. So in a nutshell, the request object gives you all the information about the request. If you need to get the request body as well, let's say when, when, you, when it comes to making post requests, which we'll do in the next episode, when it comes to making post requests where you can send data to an endpoint, you would also get that from the request object as well. If you want to get the cookies, let's say for example, if you're sending cookies from the browser to the server, which allows you to 
persist uh, persist API calls, right? You would want to get that from the request object. Now, when it comes to sending back a response, let's say, for example, if if the, if the call is successful, you would typically want to send back a status of 200. So here's what we're going to do. Now that we understand what the request and response object are, let's go ahead and do a couple things. So first, what we'll do is this groceries endpoint, we're going to make it just return a hard-coded array. So what I'll do is I'm, I'm going to go ahead and reference res res. Okay, that's the response object. And if it helps, I can just simply just call it request and response. Maybe that'll help a lot better. So let's go ahead and reference the response object. And you're going to see that we have a bunch of methods. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to call response.send. And this is going to allow us to send a body back to the client. So this is literally just the response. So it's like, for example, if you send a message to a user, like your friend, you're expecting a response back. So you can think of it like this. So let's go ahead and send an array. Okay. And we'll just go ahead and just send a message. We'll just say, well, not message, but a grocery list. So let's just say, for example, item milk quantity two, something like that. It could be anything, right? This is, like I said, I would encourage you to be uh, creative and kind of like think of other ideas that you can think of to send back as a response. So if it's groceries, if it's, you know, a list of flights, if it's a list of books, whatever it is, I encourage you to, uh, you know, go beyond and practice on your own. Okay, but we'll just deal with this for, we'll, we'll just do this for now. So we'll send back uh, just an array of two items. So let's do milk and then we'll do cereal. Uh, I'll, I'll do one more. And like I said, this could be any number of records. Okay, typically you would fetch this from a database, but I'll show you how to do that later when we get to more advanced tutorials. So let's do milk, cereal, and let's do um, Pop-Tarts, I guess. All right, so now let's go ahead and visit this groceries route. So let's go back to our application. Okay, so right now, if we go back to our localhost port 3001, I can go ahead and do slash and then the path, which is groceries, uh, let's see, it seems like it's giving us an issue. Groceries, I think our application, let me see. Oh, we aren't even running our application. Whoops, totally forgot about that. Well, let's do that real quick. Okay, cool. So you can see that right now, if I refresh, it says cannot get groceries. And I think the reason why, let me see, groceries. Let me double check. There we go. Seems like I forgot to add the slash, which is really important. Okay, but well, you can see that when I visit this route, this endpoint, okay, you can see that it gives me back literally the same response that we sent back. Okay, isn't that pretty cool? So imagine this as any type of resource. Okay, imagine it, instead of it being a list of grocery items, it could be a list of flights that you recently booked. It could be a list of credit cards, credit card, uh, uh, credit card payments it could be a list of uh, recent transactions it could be anything and that's what i want you all to think about when you're building these this api okay so hopefully you understand get requests a lot better in the next episode we're going to go ahead and set up a post request i'm going to show you how we can send data to our backend server so i'll see you all in that next episode peace out